Using Pentax 6.7 lenses on the Pentax 645Z digital camera. In this unapologetically opinionated and admittedly unscientific post, I attempt to answer the question, can you get good results with old school Pentax 6.7 lenses on a Pentax 645Z digital camera? I believe the answer is a resounding yes, especially in the age where digital technology has progressed to the point where images of stunningly beautiful models must be daubed with a touch of Gaussian blur to hide the effect so brutally revealed by gigapixel sensors and ultra-high resolution, anti-reflection coded, aspherical lenses. I acquired my first Pentax 6.7 body in good use condition back in 2006 when I made my tentative foray into medium format film photography along with a brand spanking new SMC Pentax 6.7 55mm lens which cost a small fortune and have been a huge fan of the platform ever since. The large 6x7 centimeter negatives contain roughly three times more information compared to a 35 millimeter negative, which translates into greater image detail and bigger enlargements. Handling a Pentax 6.7 feels like you're using a 35 millimeter SLR, except it's a big honking heavy machine. If you're careless, you can throw out your back lugging this camera around. Over the years, as professional photographers dumped their medium format film gear in favor of speedier digital systems, I acquired several more Pentax 6.7 bodies and a decent selection of lenses. I count several images made with the Pentax 6.7 system among my best work. In 2019, I acquired a Pentax 645Z digital camera and naturally wondered if my Pentax 6.7 lenses would work on it both mechanically and aesthetically. The mechanical part was easy. Pentax makes a 645 for 67 lens adapter, and I bought two off eBay. There are other third-party adapter makers, but I stuck with the original Pentax adapters to ensure they work properly. The aesthetic question is a bit more complicated, but one thing I was certainly not expecting was technical perfection. I had no plans to staple a lens resolution chart to a tree in the backyard 50 feet away and make microscopic comparisons between lenses and cameras. Too much work. I'm just aiming for subjectively pleasing results within reason. The good thing about using 6.7 lenses on a 6.45 body is the 6.45Z's sensor will lay well within the lens's image circle. This means the 6.7 lenses will have a longer effective focal length. The approximate crop factor is 1.62, so a Pentax 6.7 55mm lens will have an effective focal length of 55mm times 1.62, or 89.1mm. Uh, um, I round that up to 90. A Pentax 6.7 lens with a 90mm focal length is considered normal. The normal focal length for the Pentax 6.45Z is 55mm. This means that the widest 6.7 lens I currently own will be cropped to just above normal focal length on the 6.45Z. So, no wide angle shots are possible. I'll just have to live with that. The four lenses I plan to try out are the SMC Pentax 6.7 Shift 75mm f4.5, the SMC Pentax 6.7 Soft Focus 120mm f3.5, the SMC Pentax 6.7 90mm f2.8 and the Asa Asahi Pentax Takumar 6x7 600mm f4. A beast of a lens if ever there was. Shooting raw with the Pentax 645Z produces 64.9 megabyte PEF or Pentax electronic file uh, files. These files balloon to 292.5 megabytes when I import them into Adobe Lightroom and convert them to DNG or digital negative. This yields image dimensions of 34.4 inches wide by 25.8 inches high. These are big, huge images and effective storage management is a real issue when shooting with cameras that produce such large files. The Pentax 67 Shift 75mm f4.5 Every photographer needs at least one shift lens in their bag, and this lens is loads of fun. 
With it, you can correct converging lines and create panoramic images, besides just taking ordinary photographs with it. This lens has three primary controls, which are not intuitively obvious, and a fourth feature, which I wasn't sure what it was about until I read the user manual. Speaking of user manuals, I scoured the internet for a decent clean copy, and all I could find were manuals that were brutalized with uh, copyright stamps all over them from people who didn't even create the damn manuals. So, excuse my French. Uh, however, um, I decided to produce a fan uh, production user manual, and you can download this uh, user manual for this lens to help you use it if you have one. Uh, off my website, warrenworks.com. Just uh, look for the blog. I'll put a link in the in the bottom, in the description. Uh, but anyway, uh, you've got uh, two sets of aperture rings on the front. You have the primary uh, lens barrel rotation, which rotate allows you to rotate the lens every 30 degrees. And then you've got the shift, which allows you to shift 20 millimeters uh, in one direction and 20 millimeters in the opposite direction. So you can align... Uh, let's say that you have a building that uh, you're trying to take a picture of and the lines are converging because it's tall, right? You can straighten out the, len uh, the lines of the building or correct the parallax of the, of the lines by shifting the lens up. When you shift the lens up, the image will move down. If you wanted to correct lines that are converging downwards, like let's say you're on the top of a tall building and you're taking a picture aiming down, then you rotate the barrel so that the direction of the shift um, is down, downwards. Uh, and then that will move the image up and correct. Now, if you don't get full correction, then you need to either move back farther from the image or, um, or just aim the camera either up or down slightly. Of course, you won't get full parallax correction, but it's better than nothing. To use the aperture rings, there are two. There's a front aperture ring, which is where you actually set the aperture for the exposure. And then there's an inner aperture ring that allows you to um, open up the aperture. Uh, it turns easier than the outer ring. So the outer ring turns kind of hard and the inner ring turns fairly easy, right? So you set your aperture that you want to take the picture at. And then you move the inner aperture to f4.5 which opens the lens up, make it easier to focus. Because they recommend uh, in the user manual that you, if you're shifting the lens to take an image, that you set the aperture between f11 and f8. And that uh, provides the least amount of distortion of the light coming in when the lens is, I think, fully shifted. And then when you're ready to take the picture after you focused, you return the inner ring to uh, adjacent to the aperture that you want to take the photograph or the exposure at, and everything is, is all set up. The fourth feature on this lens that uh, you really don't know what it is until you read the user manual, like I said earlier, is there's a filter, a gel filter cutout at the rear of the lens just on the inside or just exterior to the rear element and you can't see it when you just look at the lens it's attached to the camera so this is like uh, a feature that really you have to dive into the user manual to find so uh, anyway back to the user manual like I say I made a fan copy uh, and there's a link uh, in the description below if you want to download the user manual for this lens Pentax 67 90 millimeter f2.8 the 90mm f2.8 is the lens I use most often on the Pentax 6x7 body. I really like this lens. It's a real bokeh monster when shot wide open and tack sharp when stopped down. On the Pentax 645Z, it's a short range telephoto lens with an equivalent focal length of about 147mm. Uh, it supports manual and automatic diaphragm modes with a switch on the lens barrel. It integrates well with the Pentax 645Z when the switch is in the auto position, allowing wide open focusing and automatic diaphragm operation via the lens adapter. I shot the following image of the tall grasses in JPEG format. If you follow the link to my website, you can actually link to the original high resolution JPEG file. 
I tried my best to focus on the weedy inflorescence in the upper left foreground as the grasses swayed hypnotically in a variable late autumn breeze. I cheated a little bit uh, in this image. It's a composite of the two images uh, following. I like to blend blurry background images with their sharp versions to yield mystical pastel images. If you go to my website uh, and actually look at the blog, the, these two, the blurry background and the sharp uh, image, link to the full-size TIFF images for closer inspection if you're interested at the incredible resolution this camera produces. Pentex 6.7 Soft Focus 120mm f3.5 why on earth would you slave in Photoshop adding blur and hunting down blemishes like head lice when it could pop out of the camera already looking ethereal and dreamlike? That's exactly what you get with this wonderful lens. It's great on a Pentax 6.7 camera and it works even better on the Pentax 645Z. I must admit, however, the sample images I've included here just fail to demonstrate the true magic of this lens. Takamar 6x7, 600mm f4. This is one big honkin' lens, no doubt about it, and it's a beauty. It's impractical to use, quite honestly, unless you employ a sturdy tripod along with the Wimberly head, too. And I provide links to the Wimberly head in the description. And oh, by the way, yep, that is a Cold Fusion website. Anyway, the Wimberly head is one sturdy piece of kit, as the Brits are fond of saying. You mount the lens to the gimbal head, and for extra bracing, run a Manfrotto long lens support. I provided a link uh, to that as well, down below. Uh, attach that to one of the legs of the tripod, and then you run that long lens support up to the base of the, the camera itself. And you, you know, the lens is attached to the gimbal, as you can see in the picture, and then the long lens support for added support, if you need it, can be attached to the actual, to the camera itself with the tripod um, socket. Opinion and assessment. Pentax 6.7 lenses employ some of the finest optics in the world, and even though they were designed and manufactured with film in mind, they work perfectly fine on the Pentax 645Z. Now, do I recommend you rush out and buy some Pentax 6.7 lenses for the sole purpose of using them on a digital camera? Nope. I think that would be a waste of money better spent on lenses specifically designed for the Pentax 645Z digital camera platform. But if you happen to have a few Pentax 6.7 lenses laying around and have lost interest in shooting or developing film or just want to extend your creative boundaries, I say uh, beg, borrow, rent or buy a Pentax 645Z and put them to good use. You're, you're, first, you're going to love the Pentax 645Z. It's a great, great camera. It's bigger than your average uh, 35 millimeter, uh, but it's still a great camera. Now the cons. Uh, all Pentax 6.7 lenses uh, have a longer apparent focal length when used on the Pentax 645Z. Uh, they're heavier and uh, makes an already big camera even harder to lug around. They require manual focusing, which, when you think about it, is honestly a first world problem if ever there was one. The pros. Uh, they produce great images. Depending on the lens you use, you can achieve incredible, unique effects, which may lead you to discover a side of your creative personality hitherto unknown. So now, uh, I recommend you venture boldly unto the world and take pictures.